best this and I'm looking for something actually I'm looking for someone is that someone you I want Dawa partners and you can be my Dawa partner right now it's real easy just go to dawapartners.com sign up and join me there are three things that I would like for you to be able to do any one of them or all of them beautiful number one you will make dua. So you can be our Dawa partner, even if you don't go to the website, but I hope you do. Number two, share. Share this message and let other people know about becoming Dawa partners. And number three, help us financially. Donate on a monthly basis, even if it's small. Allah loves the thing that you do regularly. Even if it's small, more than the thing that you do that's really big, but you only do it once. Join me as a Dawa partner. Do it now. Click, 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 click. And we're coming to you almost live from our studios here in Southern California. Yeah, man. And today we've got a special treat for everybody. We're going to be working closely with Dr. Adol all the way from Tampa, Florida. We'll introduce him just in a second. But I wanted to also mention that we are going to be talking about the winners of the contest. Once again, we already announced the winners, but once again, I would like to remind everybody what we can do to keep these kids encouraged and keep them working throughout the year on the Quran and the memorization project. Okay, so we're going to be doing that. And tonight, we're going to be talking about something called the Hijri New Year. So let's get started with that. Hijri New Year, 1441. Wait a minute, that's not right. It's 1443. What happened? <laughs> oh, no. Well, I, got, I, I can update that. Uh, 1442. <laughs> yes, 1442, that's correct. And we celebrated that around the globe yesterday. Wait, um, but the, it's 1443 is the one we need. That, that's the beginning of the lunar, the, the, uh, the uh, Egyptian, the Muslim calendar that was based on a very important event, which is the migration from Mecca to Medina. We, have a we already we have, have a caller, and, and that's great. Let's let's take that phone call. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamu alaikum. Mashallah. Who's calling us and where are you calling from? Uh, my name is Asad Abbas. I'm calling from New York. New York. All right. MashaAllah. Yeah. Go ahead. What you got for us today? So I just have a couple of questions which sometimes bothers me and I just want to clarify. Okay. Uh, one of the questions that I have is like in, in, in a lot of places, Allah says that he's very merciful. Wait a minute. Uh, uh, do you have me on speakerphone? Uh, no, sir. Okay. Speak right straight to that because we, we uh, right to the mouthpiece because we lost part of what you said. You said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then after that, I kind of uh, want. Yeah. In a lot of places, he say that he's very merciful. But what I see, like in humans, I know we have a choice. We can be peaceful. Or we can be violent, but overall, if you see this word, it's very violent, especially if you look at the animals. Animals are killing animals right now. They are like, for example, baby giraffe is killed by lion. I totally understand. I totally understand that they have to feed their self too. But what is the hikmat behind uh, creating all those uh, animals? 
which which I can totally understand that no one can question Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. He can question everyone, but sometimes uh, it, it, this question is asked from my non-Muslim brothers too. That why God has created such a violent uh, earth. So I hope that you can you can answer and clarify a lot of minds right now. All right, you you're talking about violence in the animal world or violence in amongst the people. Yeah, Even humans are killing humans, which uh, you know totally understandable. That Allah has uh, given us a brain, and it's, it's, it's up to us if we made our own choices. But overall, this world from the beginning is very, very violent and bloodthirsty. And and and, and some sometimes you know a lot of Muslim brothers, uh, sorry, non-Muslim brothers, ask me why why there is so much violence in this world, in animal world, or every living thing right now. Like they they, they are ready to eat uh, each other. Each other. All right. Well, I think that's a fair question. Let Let's look at this. Uh, people are violent to animals, but they're also violent to each other. Is that what we're saying right now? Yes. Well, but people, Allah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, have given them a brain, right? So we We have a choice. Like we can be violent, or we can be peaceful. We can follow Allah Subhanahu wa Taala path, or we can follow the devil's path. We We have a choice to make. But But if you look at the universe, like in, in in a whole right now, there is violence. Even like the, the animals are killing animals. So uh, sometimes it bothers me too. But non-Muslim brothers, they they always ask like, why God create such a violent environment? Why couldn't He create some peaceful environment? Especially when it it comes to 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 animals, they you know they can basically feed on plants. Why we have carnivores, like. There are some animal lovers, of course, you know, and why uh, sacrifice is, is, is so important, like demise, or when we basically, at the name of Allah, we kill animals, and we, we, we basically hurt them, and we, we bleed them, actually. All right, well, I think you gave part of the answer in your first, uh, in your first representation there. You mentioned uh, something that uh, the animals have to eat. Is, is that what you said? The animals have to eat each yeah. other, right? Yeah, in order to survive. In and order that, to survive. So, okay, but people don't have to eat people to survive, is that right? Yeah, that's correct. So we don't need to kill people to eat them, is that right? Yes, but we also don't need to... Uh, All right, I'm just asking questions it. here, okay? Let, let's yeah. let's get on the sure. same playing field and instead of going around and around with a, with a situation you could never address. So let us look at it from the point of view of just being real objective, not subjective, not part of the problem, but part of the solution, okay? First and foremost is no human being is to ever take another human's life. The, a, any innocent human is never supposed to be killed by another human. Is that true or false according to Islam? It's true. Is that in the Quran in chapter Maida, verse number 32? That's correct. Okay. Just want to be sure we're on the same page. <laughs> All right, so we got that. No killing of human beings without just cause. In other words, if somebody's attacking us, trying to kill us, we can defend ourselves, and if they get killed in the process, then uh, we ask Allah to forgive us all, right? Is that, is that what we're saying? All right, have now, right no, just, yes, yeah, yeah, yes or no, okay, because uh, we got a long way to go on this if we get, keep breaking it down. All right, so we got that. Now, let's talk about the animals. Are Muslims supposed to be violent in treating animals, yes or no? I'm sorry, say, say it again. Are Muslims going to be punished on the day of judgment for being violent to animals, yes or no? Killing them? No. I, I, I don't recall that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says. Uh, all right. Now hold on. Hold on. Hold. Hold on. Maybe. Are, do you accept hadith, or you just go by the Quran? Uh, both. Say hadith. Okay. Say okay. Good. Good. 
the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned so many hadith about mistreating people and mistreating animals and the punishment that is waiting for those who do so. Are you familiar with that? Uh, yes, but my knowledge okay. is not deep. Okay. All right. No, it's okay. That, but but you, you do know that there is big punishment for those who uh, act with aggression or what's called in the Arabic language, it's called volum. The volumati. These are, these are the ones who are causing such grief for everybody. They put people in, a, it's called oppression and uh, violence toward people and everything. So this is all forbidden in Islam. Did you know that? That's correct. Yes, okay. Yes. So now, are we going to live in this life forever? Yes or no? No. No, nobody's not. Uh, yeah, all of all the people are going to die. Yes or no? Every single thing. Yes. Kulu nafsan da ektomot. Every single soul will taste death. So therefore, we were born and we will die. So what is this called? What is this called? A short life. What is it called? It's called in ibtila. In Arabic, it is mentioning this is our test. Allah is testing us. Now, do we observe people doing exactly what Allah said and the Prophet ﷺ said they would do? Yes, we do. We see people being violent. We see people killing animals. We see them doing all kind of torture to even little butterflies pulling their wings off. But is this a bad thing in Islam? And yes, it is. It's clearly mentioned down to the least detail, even to ants, even to the little flies. Uh, this is all mentioned in Islam. However, when you mention killing an animal for food, who is the most careful about the way that we take an animal's life? We never take an animal's life unless we say what? In the name of Allah. And then we lay the animal yes, down Allah. quietly, and then we hide the knife from them and make sure it's so razor sharp, one pass over the jugular vein, and their blood will come out. Then there's no oxygen to their brain. They fall asleep. They are not bludgeoned to death. They are not hammered to death. They are not shot with a gun. They fall asleep. And then we do the, the preparation of their bodies for food. For goats, for sheep, for camels, for cows, for deer, and so on. The, now, when we release the arrow from the bow, we say the same thing, Bismillah. And then when the arrow goes into the animal, we get to the animal as quick as we can to pass the blade over their necks so that they will not be languishing in uh, this uh, uh, difficulty for a long time. Uh, yes or no? Is this, is this what you understood? I'm, I'm a convert to Islam, so I, I stand to be corrected. If I'm wrong, tell me. Sheikh, it's an honor to talk to you. You know Islam more than me who was born Muslim. No. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't say that, but... but uh, the, the, please, please don't embarrass me. No. Yes. Yeah, okay. So what we're talking about is when it comes to this, and I'm going to put this back up again, it says... If you let us know justice, we will let you know peace. And now, we don't have that kind of a condition. We must act with peace on all levels. The word Islam comes from the same root that the word peace comes from in Arabic. Salam, Islam, Aslama, Masalama, all of this is related. And it also comes from the same root from the word safety and security. So all of these things, let's talk about that. And then let's look at what you started with. You said that Allah's mercy. Allah's mercy is 100 parts. You know about this story, right? Hello? Hello, brother. Yeah, I'm listening. Yeah. Okay, the story... Yes, yes, I'm listening. Okay, the story about the hundred parts of Allah's mercy 
begins with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's prophet, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, asking his companions about the mercy of a mother with a brand new baby. And she's got this brand new baby, and he's saying, would this lady allow her baby to fall into a fire? They said, well, no, 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 no. And he said, this is from Allah's mercy. Every mother on the planet of anything, and animals and people, uh, are all having this mercy for their, and this is all of the mercy. Whatever the mercy is, it's all from one part of Allah's mercy, and he has 100 parts. The other 99 parts of this mercy is Rahma, is waiting for the true believers whether they are Jewish or Christian or Sabians or Muslims or what, whatever, the true believers in Allah, he, they are going to receive this mercy, the 99 parts. That's the, some scholars have said that the Rahma is the one part. The Rahim is the 99 parts. We say Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. So, from the same word. By the way, let me, a side issue. Do you know when we were talking about how short this life is, where does your life actually begin? Where were you created? Do you know that you were created, you were, uh, created inside of your mother in a place called mercy? Did you know that in the Arabic language? Yes, in the womb. It, no, it's not womb. It's called Raham. Raham. This Raham. is, yeah. So you were conceived, wait a minute. You were conceived in mercy. All of us were conceived in mercy. And mercy is waiting for those who fulfilled the purpose for which they were created. And Allah tells us in the Quran, in Surah 51, verse 56, Surah al Daryat. He tells us, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبَدُونَ I only created you jinn and you human beings for one purpose, to worship me alone without any partners. So we look to what the Qur'an and the Prophet ﷺ taught us, and that is our minhaj. That is our way of life. And we live up to that regardless of what society we look at. So, suppose in a society they allow you to kill people, or they allow you to uh, demonstrate against black people, or they allow you to uh, hurt uh, women, or they allow, but we cannot participate in that because we adhere to the, ten the tenets of Islam. And uh, I, I appreciate your call, and I hope we answered your question, brother. Oh, it's my honor that you called us and gave us a time to talk about this. <laughs> MashaAllah. Thank you so much. All right. Salaam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Salaam alaikum. Salaam alaikum. And now uh, we're, we're going to come back to Dr. Adol. Salaam alaikum, Dr. Adol. Wa alaikum salam. Salaam alaikum. Salaam alaikum. That was thank beautiful. That thank was beautiful. Uh, thank you for being with us. Uh, I, I finally found, and I want to put it up here, this is the... Uh, Islamic New Year. Let me put it up. 1443 Hijriah. This is 1443, not 1441, not 1442. When I put those up, I looked at them and I said, there's something wrong with this. <laughs> but I got a question for you. It, it's this one. I'm say, I, show, I showed you the other one first, but I found this one. It said, Happy Islamic New Year. 1443. Should Muslims being say, uh, say Happy New Year, or is there something better we could say? Happy New Year, year is fine. Obviously, everybody said or, uh, Oh, yeah, know, but that's um, that's not the same as Happy New Year. <laughs> Hijri, Hijri year. People now are start learning uh, about it, and I love that educational part when people actually uh, more and more going on social media, um, kind of uh, sharing the joy and celebration and uh, giving a, uh, you know, people what it is it that, that Muslims are celebrating this uh, new, um, you know, big event that have started uh, 
you know, uh, 1,443 years ago and with the landmark event uh, that uh, Khalifa Omar has decided to, to be uh, the um, timing that uh, we were going to start our uh, calendar year uh, with it, which was the uh, landmark event of migration from Mecca to Medina and establish the new religion, uh, Islam, by uh, Prophet وسلم, and all the followers. And then it, it blossomed to all the encompasses the whole universe. And now almost 2 billion uh, you know, followers of Islam uh, are celebrating it. Can, can I add something to that? Sure. All right. For, uh, first of all, uh, you mentioned new religion. It, maybe it was new. Uh, actually, well, I heard one of our sheikhs, uh, a beautiful person, he, he told us about something called bid'ah. He said some bid'ah is a new invention, like a microwave oven when it came on the, the uh, it became available to people. And they, they, they said, oh, this is a bid'ah. This is the new invention. And some people said it was haram because they considered anything bid'ah haram. But <clears throat> according to Islam, Islam was always there, but it was recognized by the Prophet ﷺ and given this name of aslama that's the that's the verb in arabic but uh, as you well know but uh, also islam itself was always there with adam with uh, uh, sure submission yeah it's submission and surrender to god on his terms doing god's will on earth and that's in the lord's prayer so it's always been there and uh, it's what Adam was supposed to do, but he messed up, and then that's the example for us to follow. And then uh, Abraham, alayhi salam, uh, he also was living up to that, to surrender to God's will. That's why he was going to offer his son as a sacrifice, but then he didn't have to. And uh, it's uh, similar with the uh, Jesus, that he was not the sacrifice, but something else was shown to them. That's mentioned in the Quran, by the way. And uh, so I, I, I wanted to not correct you because you are right, but I'm just saying for the folks that are watching in the future, I want to be sure they know that this is not some new religion that popped up in the Arab desert somewhere. But also uh, another thing that when we say about the the Islamic years, the Hijri years, again, that's not something new, newly invented, but it was just when Omar said, okay, let's start our counting from right now from Hijri, when the Prophet ﷺ made his Hijra from the area of Mecca all the way up to the area of Medina and uh, with Abu Bakr, and when they got there, that he reflected back on that and when he was the caliph and that's when they came up with this idea but the months going by the moon have always been there that's probably since the time of Adam himself because we didn't associate worshiping the sun with the days of the week we always call them one two three four five six seven sabah in Arabic is sabbath in Hebrew and that's what's in the Bible so I, I want to be sure everybody knows that we didn't change anything we just started counting because always we went by the the moon calendar for uh, since Adam until now we go by the moon calendar but we go by the Sun to know what time of the day it is is that right yes sir absolutely beautifully said um... Oops. And and just to, for people to get to to at least recognize what it is, and uh, so to be familiar with it, and uh, what's the history behind it. that's that's all. Okay. Well, now the reason I have you on here is because we want to talk about doctor stuff. So sure. and you're the you're the number one heart doctor for us. So uh, we want to talk about the physical heart, and we can talk about the 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 spiritual heart later but uh, I, would okay. like, I would like okay to... I, I appreciate that so much um, I wanted actually to my touch base on uh, now that our people are um, the economy is opening up people go back to work the jobs the school and uh, we have uh, a association close association between mental health and heart health 
And uh, that happened, uh, you know, that we see now after months of uh, social isolation. Now, um, a lot of people with heart disease are going back to social gathering more or less the work environment. And uh, we should appreciate the fact that it could be a re- uh, an increase in the risk of mental health uh, disorder, whether adjustment disorder uh, going going back uh, after the month, many months of isolation that have in the past, you know, uh, 15 to 17 months uh, since all the pandemic starts. But I wanted to to make people aware of this uh, because we have, uh, for instance, an anxiety disorder experienced by one out of five in U.S. Um, adults aged um, 18 years of age. Uh, they have this anxiety disorder, and, uh, and then that could be one out of three over uh, a lifetime uh, uh, an Americans uh, that will uh, get to have experienced some sort of an anxiety. And the symptoms uh, could be emotional uh, symptoms, restlessness, irritability, uh, you know, some, sometimes heart-related, like fast heartbeats, irregular heartbeats, shortness of breath, and it could be also some sweating and tremors. Uh, and then you could have uh, uh, some subtypes of the anxiety, which could be a generalized anxiety, social anxiety disorder, uh, where people feel, uh, you know, not able to, you know, uh, be socially, um, uh, I would say, uh, um, uh, able to, uh, you know, uh, mix with people and have, uh, uh, have difficulty uh, to be uh, around um around people and have social gatherings. Uh, also panic disorder and phobias, different different fears and so on. So I just wanted to, uh, to for people to recognize as we go uh, now into less, you know, um, isolation, physical isolation and more back to work that uh, the people who have, you know, heart disease may also have high incidence of an anxiety and mental dis- uh, uh, disorders uh, that could impact uh, their work and their health. And we need to be kind to each other. We need to be um, con- con- you know, concerned uh, uh, about uh, these things. So if we see we get the appropriate help uh, to folks, but also be kind so that uh, the anxiety and the stress of adjusting back um, uh, will not have uh, serious uh, health consequences uh, on, on so many people that unfortunately uh, the pandemic has uh, increased and amplified uh, those disorders. All right, uh, Doctor, I, I'd like for, if, if you don't mind, I would like for you to give us some of the idea of what we can do to get our brain or our mind set up and, and get away from these disasters of depression, anxiety, etc. And what else can we do also to protect our hearts? Because the, very, the physical very good. heart... That's a very good question. Uh, number one is the surroundings around you. Surround yourself with positive people. Surround yourself with, uh, you know, people that will give you positive uh, hope and uh, you know, basically uh, yeah, trying to, and positive thinking, a positive uh, way of uh, looking at things um yeah that uh, to address the um, the issues uh not within it with more anxiety but actually to um, you know with uh workable solutions um you know the the equal law their members of god and prayers are essential in cutting down the anxiety and the phobias and the fears uh because uh, you know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know god almighty who created us uh, and said beautifully in the Quran, Allah was asking that question, wouldn't remembers of God make the heart calm and um, you put tranquility and peace in the heart? So the, the heart will not race, um, you know, a heart will not go into fast, uh, fast beats and uh, will have a peace and tranquility so it's not have constriction uh, uh, in, in, in the chest and the, and the shortness of breath. and. Uh, and unfortunately, sometimes with the anxiety, it kind of feeds itself in a very uh, kind of vicious way uh, with the vicious cycle, more anxiety, more more competition, more racing heart, more, you know, uh, and anxiety and so on and so forth. So if people try to adapt those changes, uh, meditation, exercise, 
uh, prayer, uh, liquid love. Always keep your mouth wet with the remembrance of God. SubhanAllah. Glorify God. Thank Allah. Alhamdulillah. La ilaha illallah. To affirm the faith in God. We say, La hawla la quwata illa billah. There is no help on earth or strength except with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to overcome whatever, you know, hardships and whatever challenges that we have in our life. And if you keep on, you know, being connected uh, with God on a regular basis through these simple um, acts, it will be a huge uh, uh, game changer in the way you feel. And of course, there is always room for professional help, uh, but on a regular basis, on a 24-7 basis. Uh, these are, you know, uh, simple things uh, and also good food and nutrition, good uh, good uh, night uh, uh, sleep, uh, uh, you know, help to have time to meditation and to unload the, the, um, the daily stresses, resentments, um, uh, you know, uh, I think that that's also could be very, very, um, you know, helpful. But the bottom line is don't don't let yourself. I think we're uh, going to take a break. And uh, we'll be right back. Sheikh, stay tuned, stay guided with... Guide Us TV! Yusuf Estes. And I'm looking for something. Actually, I'm looking for someone. Is that someone you? I want Dawa Partners. And you can be my Dawa Partner right now. It's real easy. Just go to DawaPartners.com, sign up, and join me. There are three things that I would like for you to be able to do. Any one of them, or all of them, beautiful. Number one, you will make dua. So you can be our dawa partner, even if you don't go to the website, but I hope you do. Number two, share. Share this message and let other people know about becoming dawa partners. And number three, help us financially. Donate on a monthly basis, even if it's small. Allah loves the thing that you do regularly, even if it's small, more than the thing that you do that's really big, but you only do it once. Join me as a Dawa partner. Do it now. Click, 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 click. And we are back, mashallah. I think the, the doctor is trying to vie against me for my position, and he's going to take over, and then I'm going to do the doctoring. I, I, I'm ready. <laughs> if anybody wants to come and, and let me try to operate on them, uh, uh, what, what do you use, a buzz saw or a hammer, or what do you use when you're working on these guys? I'm ready. <laughs> You're, you're the best teacher. You're the best teacher. And uh, I remember we said we don't get paid, uh, you know, and this and that, uh, you know, come in and show and said, well, Sheikh is a bill is a trillionaire, you know, <laughs> the currency here is good deeds. So, uh, mashallah, and I know Dr. Sultan is not uh, here today, but uh, he's a, you know, billionaire. And then, you know, when it comes to good deeds, and that's what we should be competing for. And, and, and that's the reaffirmation of faith especially with the new Hijri year, you know, to, to make the Hijra to Allah, you know, to, to really um, uh, reflect on, on, on God and, and thanking him through the, the work that pleases uh, the creator. And, um, you know, you're doing a great job and you're a great teacher. So um, we appreciate to, you know, the opportunity and this platform to share with, uh, with the folks around the globe, uh, Muslims and non-Muslims alike, to benefit uh, from this for their health. Now we're talking about um, switching gears to uh, about Delta. That and, uh, you know, um, I think we should, uh, anybody have any questions related to COVID or non-COVID, please call 1-800-971-4383. The number again is 1-800-971-4383. Yeah, give now us we a call. We're, we're excited for you guys to call in. The, don't think because we're talking that we're not going to take your call. It does take time for you to call in, then get to our system, and then get a, uh, you know on the air. So give yourself at least three to five minutes time before you're actually going to be on the air with us. And then when you're watching it on your TV, be sure to turn the volume down so it won't give us feedback. All right? So, But if you're watching on your phone, you already know that when you make the phone call, it will... <laughs> <laughs> turn the volume off anyway. Doctor, the subject that you've got now, I think is very, very important. Let's let's tell everybody what it's about. 
Well, a, a lot of folks, uh, we, we touched yesterday on, uh, on the Delta uh, variant of uh, COVID-19, but we just wanted to uh, to give more information about it. We already know it's uh, more transmissible. We already know that, uh, you know, it, it's, it, it, it uh, kind of uh, they have a faster spread. Um, you know, sometimes uh, some of the reports more than a thousand times compared uh, uh, compared to the uh, conventional or traditional COVID-19. Uh, there is, uh, you know, now data that comes out, uh, you know, the good data about the vaccine. When, when, when the vaccine uh, came in and, and for folks who have more than the rate of uh, 60 to 70 percent of vaccination rate, um, even if people get uh, infected with uh, with Delta, they have a you know more or less favorable outcome in terms of uh, not able to uh, not, not being hospitalized, not being uh, put on a breathing machine, and certainly uh, not dying from uh, from COVID uh, uh, nineteen uh, infection. And uh, for young people, for old people, for um, you know those who are. Um, you know, I'm talking about 12 uh, years and onwards, uh, the Delta uh, the vaccination have proven to be uh, effective as well as protective uh, against the Delta uh, variant. So it may be uh, more transmissible, it may be more, um, you know, uh, infectious in the, in the ability to, to really spread faster. Uh, but the vaccination has changed the pandemic for the better. And uh, only the challenges if the vaccination rate less than 40 percent in those areas where the um, there will be uh, you know uh, those clusters of cases of uh, of delta of delta virus that, that we have to do so the more uh, we go on with the vaccination uh, the more protection and the more uh, uh, I would say um, uh, re uh, resistance uh, to build with the with the immune response that will you know, even if people get to get the infection, they, it will be um, less uh, serious in terms of uh, hospitalization, in terms of uh, going to uh, be, for instance, put on um, a breathing machine or, uh, you know, less likely to die from uh, COVID-19. So that's a good, that's a good news. Uh, doctor, I would, I would like to ask the question because uh, I, I heard you speaking about something the other day and I, I wanted to know how important it is for us to know uh, this. Uh, it said that the virus is classified as B.1.1.7, B.1.351, or B.1.617. What does all of that mean, or do okay. I need to know it? <laughs> the, these were uh, uh, kind of uh, initially when first uh, was found uh, was uh, a year ago or so. In, in UK, uh, uh, before it reached, uh, you know, to the United States, it became actually a dominant uh, strain and in, variant in, in the different different places. This was the arrangements of the co codes, if you would, uh, on on the um, uh, on the on the virus. Um, uh, that's uh, on genetic coding, if you would, uh, to be able to identify uh, various types and then be coded accordingly. To uh, uh, to uh, that particular uh, sequence of genetic uh, sequence uh, that, that that they isolated it from, you know, very different variant that can tell this is related to alpha or this related to beta, or this related to uh, delta, because there's there's also other you know variants that are going to go down the pike. Okay. The most important. Uh, why is it? Uh so prevalent why why is it spreading around like it is well the some of the explanations uh that uh, i've read in uh, many articles uh, about those variants and why we just going to go into this um you know catch-up phenomenon where now um you know because uh, you know they it, it all have to do with how many people out there vaccinated and got their immunity uh build up uh, and we're talking about this uh, magic number of 70% uh, percent of the population to get the herd immunity. And once you reach the 70 or more of, of vaccination or uh, getting a strong immune system, it would be less likely for new variants to be developed. But since we didn't reach that, um, then there was uh, other mutations or other changes in the, in the vaccine and the virus uh, itself. The virus is kind of a smart and, 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 and 
replicates in, in a new way, uh, in a new uh, genetic code. And unfortunately, the Delta happened to be the one that had uh, the recent outbreaks in, in the US. Um, you know, last year was in UK. Um, and earlier in the year also it was in UK, uh, United Kingdom. But, but in here, uh, this is what we're uh, confronted with. Uh, but this will hopefully uh, give us uh, an idea uh, that if you are in an area, geographic area, where the vaccination rate is high, 60, 70 percent, you're, you're OK. Even if you are, quote unquote, uh, diagnosed with, uh, with COVID virus, your outcome is much more favorable than if you are in areas where the vaccination rate less than 40 percent, then the outcome of, of uh, Delta uh, uh, virus uh, infection uh, will be much more uh, serious in terms of hospitalization, uh, respiratory failure, need for um, yeah, intubation or put on a breathing machine, and also for fatality. So, uh, you know, I, I believe that uh, the you know, that's another evidence for the benefit of vaccination. Yesterday, we mentioned for those who had the COVID uh, virus, I said, well, I just got the virus already. Why should I get vaccinated? Well. The, uh, the data came from, and, and uh, this is right straight from CEC, uh, that the, the basically that, that uh, argument is subtle, that the people who, uh, who got the, the, the COVID um, uh, infection initially, uh, they benefit from COVID uh, uh, vaccine um, as it prevents reinfection. And if it does happen again, it will not lead to serious consequences. And so no matter how you cut it, um, you know, we encourage everybody to uh, take advantage of it uh, because this is not just for you, but also for the people around you, for the people in the house and the community and the people to interact with. Now you're going back to school. I think, uh, you know, the, the, the folks in the military, I think they announced also today that's going to be mandatory. So I believe um, for everybody's safety and for everybody's moving uh, as we open up and going to gradually back to normal, uh, this um, you know, uh, measure is, is good, but also have to look into the long term um, about a uh, way of, of preventing a reinfection and strengthening the immune system. And I think we discussed that, uh, you know, so many times by good diet, nutrition, um, um, healthy lifestyles, get rid of bad habits, um, you know, get rid of all processed foods, you know, high uh, you know, uh, carbohydrates, high sugar food, and uh, and stay with the fresh uh, fruits and vegetables. And um, I know it sounds uh, very simple, but this is the main core of building the immune, uh, the healthy and, and sustainable immune um, uh, health that will prevent infection and reinfection, not just from coronavirus, but any other pathogen, whether it's bacterial, viral, fungal, or otherwise. Okay, you're saying that the immune system uh, needs uh, different things. Talk about zinc, vitamin C, iron, uh, vitamin E. Is that is that something we really need to know about? Vitamin D is good, um, and uh, it was already um, for those, especially for our sick, that's used one of the arms of protocol along with high dose vitamin C. That's proven help um, uh, in in the series or advanced cases of of, uh, of COVID. Uh, vitamin E is not uh, really uh, uh, used and, and, and it can lead to uh, blood clots. Uh, so it's not, uh, you know, uh, of help. Uh, but vitamin D is good. Vitamin C is good. Talk, uh, about, zinc, uh, talk zinc. about the foods that we can eat that, that have these different things like citrus, garlic, ginger, yogurt, spinach. Yes, like absolutely. Uh, this is uh, for vitamin C, um, you know, lemon. You know, it's cheap. It's uh, it's very, very, very uh, powerful antiviral um, uh, element. And we discussed about this cocktail of ginger, honey, uh, lemon, and the black seed uh, to be used on on daily basis to enhance and strengthen the immune system naturally. You could throw in some turmeric and cinnamon as well. They're both uh, added uh, power to the um, immune system uh, boosting naturally. Um, and, and I believe this is the sustainable tra uh, strategy to help, um, you know, prevent um, uh, infection and reinfection. Uh, and, and because uh, this stuff, unfortunately, is around us um, everywhere now. So we have to uh, be prepared and build that firewall 
that will prevent, um, you know, uh, infection from happening and recurring. I think that uh, this is a good idea for people to take the opportunity if you can go, if you're watching us already on your computer or on your phone, you can easily go to Google and type in food, health, immunity. Just type in, that's what I did just now and I found all of this information and I didn't know these things, but I did know a little bit about the black seed. Doctor, would you like to talk to us about the black seed and the impact that it has, and also why it, uh, where, how it came about that we heard about black seed, where did we hear from it, etc.? <laughs> sure. Um, thank you so much. This is, this is critical for everybody to know. Um, black seed uh, is, is more than, uh, let's say, 5,000 years uh, old. It's been around. Is first found in King Tut's tomb, but is also mentioned in the Bible. And the Prophet of Islam, uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, "In the black seed, the cure for all disease, um, except death." So we're we're um, you except know, what? Uh, except death. So when sometimes I have because death is ordained by by the Creator. So when somebody's time is up, is up. That that is cannot be changed. But everything diseased uh, that's out there, whether it's uh, immune disease, whether it's hypertension, whether it's uh, connective tissue disease, whether it's um, you know allergies, whether it's uh, arthritis, uh, all that could be um, you know helped and uh, strengthened um, you know with the uh, you know with the black seed um, you know natural uh, global natural therapy. And I remember I put this article back in 2015 and it really have uh, impacted so many people. but just to, give some idea, um, you know, about how it is um, that they have about more than 100 active ingredients in the black seed that will regulate the immune system and boost it naturally. We said that it helps the coughing, allergies, bronchitis. Um, it's an anti-inflammatory, um, you know, properties. Uh, it, so it gets, uh, you know, through um, a, a potent inhibitor, something called thromboxane B2, which is a mediator of inflammation. Also, leukotrienes B4, uh, it's another mediator of inflammation, cyclooxygenase and, and lipooxygenase. This is the material that was um, kind of isolated from the black seed that was proven uh, to help all inflammatory uh, you know, uh, diseases in the body, and, and that's part of the chronic diseases inflammation in the joints um, uh, and in the uh, uh, in the, the body tissues it also it, it has this uh, destabilization of uh, interleukin which uh, has a something called tumor necrosis factor so it's it's a safeguard against uh, you know the the uh, it comes to um, uh, therapy when it comes to to cancer it uh, it helps to uh, uh, stop the spread of uh, of cancer cells uh, because it helped the immune systems as something called. Now we're we're talking it's still talking about the black seed. Is that right? Oh yes, oh yes. There is a ratio, um, you know, good cops, bad cops in the body. Uh, there is a a um, the something called T cells, which is like the cops that goes after the bad cells or or the cancer cells, and then can stop their activity, their natural killer cells activity. So in a way that is anti-cancer uh, and it prevents the spread of uh, cancer, it also helps the fertility. It helps the number of sperm count and, uh, and it helps the fertility in both men and women. The only uh, you know, uh, contraindication uh, not to take black seed during pregnancy because it, it has uh, uh, something called prostaglandins. It's a, it's a substance that can increase the uh, uterine uh, contraction and can theoretically cause miscarriage but uh so if somebody's pregnant no black seed but everybody else um you know uh should be on it um uh, for the kids after the first three years uh when the bone marrow is already developed they could have starts of black seed drops up to the age of 12 and after that they can take tablets uh and and that will be you know it's all enhance the immune system this is so vague because if we uh, look at the data, we have 30 million um, people in the United States who have autoimmune disease or depressed immune system um, or on chemotherapy or an HIV or post-transplant or 
uh, taking steroids on a regular basis because of connective tissue disease and so on and so forth. All those folks are the potential uh, COVID-19, um, you know, I would say uh, uh, victims, if you would, or the potential uh, folks that will be harmed by it. But if we strengthen the immune system, I believe uh, natural with the, with the black seed and, and, and I just touched a small um, uh, number of benefits uh, and the substances that's have been proven uh, to be very effective in modulating the immune system of the, of the body naturally without any side effects. Like uh, for if, if, if used to compare with chemotherapy, you know, most of the chemotherapy will, 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 will hit all the, the good cells and bad cells. That's why you have suppression of bone marrow, you have loss of hair, you have, you know, kind of a lot of, uh, you know, side effects. But in the black seed, it will help to go well, straight well, directly. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Hold on. You said, and, and you're a medical doctor, you know about this stuff. So you're telling me that a black seed that I can buy, uh, I can get this almost at any health food place. Is that right or no? Yeah, yes, but you have to be aware of the um, uh, the amount of purification, you know, purity uh, and the quality uh, of, of, of the black seed that really makes a difference in the therapeutic response. So, you know, the more purified, uh, you know, uh, uh, forms, the more uh, concentrated uh, forms um, of, of black seed, that's the one uh, that, uh, that really helps. And I have so many uh, of uh, my patients have taken it over the years since then, um, and it helped the mental sharpness, mental energy, even if for wellness, even without without disease. So um, tell us you know, about. Certain, I'd like for you to mention one more time what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, told us about this black seed. I, I really, I'm really impressed that this is something that would make it easier for people to avoid cancer and then instead of getting all of the chemotherapy in the early stages that this would i i'm but sometimes you know i'm telling people it's not a replacement but it will definitely help the immune system so it will not be devastated because sometimes when when people go into chemotherapy it's strong like the white blood cell count which is like the cops in the in the blood system that go and fight the infection, their number becomes suppressed, and people go in something called neutropenia and become more liable to get infection. But if we can um, build the immune system uh, uh, to have all these benefits, it will lessen the severity uh, of the of the disease. It will certainly prevent, uh, you know, uh, infection or the rate of infection, and it will improve the outcome so that people don't uh, become, you know, uh, 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 I would say, uh, you know, have repeated infection after infection after infection because now we have antibiotic resistant bacteria. And then the most important thing is it will really improve the quality of life in people rather than them being uh, lifelong dependent on steroids. The steroids lead to diabetes, diabetes lead to fungal infection and, uh, you know, COVID. And we discussed this so many times. And uh, we, we have so many people who have. Uh, in um, autoimmune disease, lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, and so on and so forth. So what, what do you do? Um, you know, people have HIV, people have, uh, uh, you know, uh, cancer uh, therapy, and, and the answer is not steroids uh, to be lifelong. Uh, you know, for some short-term uh, folks, that's fine, but for uh, long therapy, I think the strengthening the immune system is the only way and sustainable way. Um, and by the way, it's mentioned in Isaiah, in the, in the Bible, 28, 25, um, in the NK, uh, uh, Jehovah's, uh, JV, and, and the Old Testament, uh, that mentioned the Black Seed as well. So, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a good, um, uh, you know, uh, natural remedy. It's been out for thousands of years. It's safe. It has no side effects. Like I said, the only precaution, uh, is when someone is pregnant, there's no, uh, contraindications. Other than that, there's no uh, interaction with medication. There is no side effects. Um, so, uh, in black cumin, it's another name for it. Nigella sativa, uh, S A 
T-I-V-A is, an, is another uh, uh, name uh, for Let's it. Say that uh, other name again, uh, the last one. In, sure, N-I-G-E-L-L-A-S-A-T-I-V-A, Nagila Sativa. Uh, that's like a Latin name for it. black human, C-U-M-I-N, uh, or the seed of blessings, Habit al baraka in Arabic, or Habba Sauda, the black seed. So, so that's I, I found an image here. It said black seed versus black cumin. Which is which? It says uh, what? What kind of question? I, I think the uh, most active ingredient in the black seed is is black cumin. So uh, this, so it's the know, same thing. Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. And and um, you know I just wanted to give a some people uh, hope about things that will help them. That will help their immune system, and that's a natural global uh, immune uh, therapy that is uh, very, very cheap and very, very effective and very, very safe. And um, you know, it does uh, you know uh, great um, you know uh, positive effects on modulating the immune system naturally, so it can fight um, you know infections and reinfections. And, and what, that what, will be what, the what theme are we talking about, about, about now? I'm talking in general about the black seed or the oh, seed of black seed. Oh, we're still on the black seed. Okay, I just want to be yes. sure. Yes, sir. How to use black seeds, the ultimate guide to cooking with black seeds and its benefits. And there's also other things uh, that have to do with the skin lesions. Um, you know, we have all this, uh, you sometimes, uh, you know, a lot of kids on stress during the exams and all that, they have those... Uh, you know, uh, bones on their on their uh, lips and uh, you know varicella. It's usually the var varicella virus. Um, it, it is not the uh, uh, the uh, sexually transmitted. I'm talking about the just uh, the the varicella, you know, uh, or herpes that goes into the um, uh, mouth and and the, you know, especially about people under a lot of mental stress. Um, and uh, you know, black seed uh, oil that can be put uh, topically on it, and, and it just makes it go away. Um, you know, some some folks will put it on a, a toe fungal infection will make it go away. Some people will um, um, uh, will have it on allergic um, you know areas of uh, the skin of the body where they just keep on um, itching, uh, and that will will make it will make it help. And it also have um, anti aging effect. When somebody just want to whoa, anti aging <laughs> effect. Now you're cooking. Tell me about the this black it seed delays, is the fountain yes, of it youth. <laughs> yes, it, it delays it delays in, uh, the uh, the maturation of protein. That's the mechanism. So it will uh, prevent or delay the you know the um, like wrinkles of you know the the on the skin. Uh, and uh, this is uh, this has happened uh, been uh, proven to have uh, a good um, uh, effect in addition to mental sharpness and energy. So it does have uh, uh, a definite improvement uh, on the overall uh, general uh, health and status uh, of the, the patient, regardless of what the age is. The benefit still continues to occur without any side effects. I and want to read again, something to you, what I found here. Let, let, let's uh, uh, wind up our show with this, uh, inshallah. Many people state that when they consume black seed oil regularly, that their nails, their fingernails, their hair, and skin are stronger and noticeably healthier. Black seed reduces the appearance of wrinkles and fine lines, can also treat skin conditions such as psoriasis, acne, eczema, and even burns. Taken internally, black seed oil can make your hair, nails longer, stronger from the inside out. I know a lot of Muslims that would be real happy to have their hair be full and growing out so what about black seed for muslims i think that's a good idea what do you think i think i think for all mankind the prophet muhammad and i tell that to my patient when you use black seed please thank our, our beloved prophet muhammad the prophet of islam for prescribing this to all mankind and and giving us uh, that big advice about using it 
to help uh, to help us stay healthy and to help strengthen our immune system. We well, need it I guess level. it's time for us to wind it up. Doctor, you did a great job. Tell us again all about it. Yes, sir. Um, I'm glad time fly, but um, you know, we, we covered good, good grounds today. And stay tuned, stay guided with Guidance, Guidance TV. TV. Yusuf Estes, and I'm looking for something. Actually, I'm looking for someone. Is that someone you? I want DAWA partners. And you can be my DAWA partner right now. It's real easy. Just go to DAWAPartners.com, sign up, and join me. There are three things that I would like for you to be able to do. Any one of them, or all of them. Beautiful. Number one, you will make dua. So you can be our DAWA partner, even if you don't go to the website, but I hope you do. Number two, share. Share this message and let other people know about becoming DAWA partners. And number three, help us financially. Donate on a monthly basis, even if it's small. Allah loves the thing that you do regularly. Even if it's small, more than the thing that you do that's really big, but you only do it once. Join me as a DAO partner. Do it now. Click, 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 click. Ooh.